Hello world, I'm Ryan, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Parrot to a virtual machine. So this video is going to be a bit different than my normal videos. I'm going to be doing a walkthrough on how to install Parrot Security, the pen testing Linux distribution. And we're going to be installing it on a VMware Workstation Player. Now you could also do this same process on VirtualBox, but I personally heavily prefer VMware to VirtualBox. So we're going to be using VMware Player, which is free, and we're going to download Parrot Security. And we're going to do that right now. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the Parrot Security website. That's right up here in the browser here. It's parrotsec.org. So head over to parrotsec.org. And you'll be greeted with this wonderful splash page here and you have the option to download so we're going to click on download and there are a few additions here and these additions vary slightly so home edition is parrot it has all of the look and feel of parrot but it doesn't have a ton of programs and applications already installed to it this is meant more for daily use as opposed to pen testing there is the security edition which is more of the pen testing distribution. This is going to have pen testing and red team tools built in and installed. And then there are also some other additions that we're not gonna worry about. For this video, we're gonna install the security edition. So you have a few options on how you wanna download it. You could download it via torrent, which is the fastest way. So if you wanna do that, go ahead. Torrents are totally legal. This is totally fine. Uh, you can download it via the torrent and that's gonna be the fastest way to download it. You can also download it directly from the Parrot servers with download. And once it's downloaded, you're gonna have an item ISO file. Now for the purposes of this video, I have already downloaded Parrot ahead of time, so we're going to move on to the next step, which is to get VMware Workstation Player. So you can get this by going to vmware.com slash products slash workstation dash player, or you can just Google VMware Player and you'll get it right on Google. This will be in the description as well, linked, and you have the option to download for free. Now this is a hypervisor. It's a piece of software that lets you run VMs. and to be more specific, it's a Type 2 hypervisor. And what that means is it's just a hypervisor that you can install on your computer on top of your operating system, as opposed to a Tier 1 hypervisor, which installs directly onto the hardware itself. An example of that might be ESXi, another VMware product. So we're going to go ahead and hit Download for free. And you're going to get redirected to this page. Make sure you have 16.0 selected. That's going to be the newest version. And we can go to Downloads. And then we have the option to download VMware Workstation 16.2.3 Player for Windows 64-bit operating systems. We can go ahead and download that now. Now, if by some chance that you are on a Mac and you want to do the same thing, you can use VMware Fusion instead. For VMware Fusion, you can go to this link. This will also be in the description. You have to register an account with VMware in order to get a personal use license for Fusion. But once you do that, you can use it for free for non-commercial purposes, and it works fantastic. In my opinion, it's the best hypervisor available on Mac, even better than, say, Parallels. But that's up to you to decide. But if you were going to use a Mac, you could use this. So back to VMware Workstation Player, you're going to want to go ahead and download this. And this is going to download an .exe file, which I already have downloaded. And once this is downloaded, go ahead and double click on the exe to run the installer. So once you run the installer, you're going to be prompted with this screen here. And we're going to go ahead and just hit next. We're going to agree to the end license user agreements. And we're going to hit next. It's going to ask you if you want to install the Windows hypervisor platform. This is going to allow you to install a VMware player alongside Hyper-V, which is Microsoft's built-in hypervisor. I would recommend that you do in fact check this and that you hit next. Then it's going to ask if you want to install the enhanced keyboard driver. I would do that. You don't need to restart afterwards, but I would install that driver. We're not going to join the customer experience improvement program, but we will check for product updates on startup. We can install the icons if we want to, and then we'll hit install. This is going to go through the installation process, and when it's done, we're going to have a hypervisor that we can then install that ISO file we downloaded for Parrot onto. When it's done installing, you can go ahead and click finish, and then you're going to have to restart your computer if you want it to take effect. I'm going to hit no for that right now. We're going to try to go ahead and start it up without doing that. So now I've launched VMware Player. If you've purchased it, you'll have a license to put in here, but we can just hit continue and then finish. And this will launch VMware Workstation Player. We can now go ahead and create our new virtual machine. So we can do that by clicking create new virtual machine. And then we need to select the ISO file for Parrot that we downloaded earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and select Parrot Security 5.0.1. This is the file that I had downloaded earlier before. And it tries to detect the version. It thinks it's Debian 5. It's wrong. Don't worry about it. We're just going to hit next. Then we can go ahead and name it. So I'll name this Parrot Security Demo. 
And you can also select the location of where you want to store the virtual machine file. Maybe if you have a storage drive that you want to put it on or something, you can select that by hitting the browse button there. But for now, we're just going to hit next. You can then select the maximum size of the disk. So how big do you want this VM to be able to grow to in terms of storage size? I'm going to just say it can be up to 60 gigabytes and you can choose to split that up into many different files, which makes it a little bit faster when you're transferring it over. But I like to choose to store it as a single file just because it makes it a little bit neater. So now we're gonna hit next. And now we have the ability to customize the hardware. We're gonna do that, change the hardware. Right now it's set to be two gigabytes of memory. I'm going to change this. I'm going to crank this up to be around six gigabytes of memory. That's going to be good enough for me. I have roughly 16 gigabytes of memory in this system and six gigabytes dedicated to the virtual machine that I'm going to be using a lot. Seems pretty reasonable to me. Now we can select the number of processors. I have a 12 thread system and I'm going to dedicate four of those to the virtual machine. So I'll do that. We've already selected what's going to be connected on boot up. That is going to be the ISO file that we selected earlier. Network is going to be set to NAT. I recommend leaving this as it is. I do not recommend that you change this. USB controller can remain the same. Sound card, printer, these can all remain the same. I would recommend changing display. I would check accelerate 3D graphics. And I would recommend selecting whatever you can here for graphics memory and then hitting close. Now that we're done, we can go ahead and power on the virtual machine. It might give you this pop up. Just go ahead and click OK. And then we get to the screen. I'm going to go ahead and full screen this VM here. And we're going to hit try and install. And we're just going to wait for this to boot up. Okay, so now we're live booted into Parrot. We could actually use this as just the Parrot operating system if we wanted to. We could go ahead and start pen testing. But the thing is, is that right now it's just running off that ISO. There's nothing installed. So we want to actually install this. That way we can continue to use it and changes that we make persist. So we'll go ahead and double click install Parrot. And that will bring up the installation wizard. So I'm going to select American English, which is there by default because that's what I speak. New York, this actually is my time zone. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. US English default. Yep, that's good for me. And then we get to this screen. Okay. What do you want to do? Do you want to erase the disk or manual partition? Well, because this is a VM and the disk is just something we created solely for the purpose of creating this VM, we're going to go ahead and say yes, you can erase the entire disk and just replace it with Parrot. So we're just going to hit erase disk and hit next. Now we have to enter some details. What's your name? My name is Ryan. What do you want to use to log into? It's Ryan. What's the name of this computer? Ryan YouTube demo. We'll choose a password. It'll be password. And then we're going to go ahead and hit next. And this is going to be the final screen. It's going to confirm the information for us. And once we verify that this is all correct, we can go ahead and hit install. And then we're going to go ahead and hit install now. And now it is installing. This will take a little bit, maybe about 10 minutes. And once it's done, you'll have Parrot on your VM. Okay, so now our installation of Parrot is done. We're going to go ahead and hit done with restart now checked, and that's going to restart the VM now booting directly into the installed version of Parrot. So what we see right here is our grub menu. We're just going to go ahead and hit enter, or we can not hit anything at all, and it will automatically go after a few seconds. And voila, now we have Parrot installed. So we're going to go ahead and log in with the credentials that we specified earlier. And if I just resize the window here, and there we go, you now have Parrot installed on a VM that you can access. So if I pop out of a full screen here now, and I were to shut this down, when I open up VMware Player again, we can see that I have the option to now start my Parrot security demo workstation, and I can change the machine settings. I could change how much RAM or threads are dedicated to it, or I can go ahead and start it back up. I can now use this to start pen testing. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you guys how to install a Parrot security or a Linux VM to your machine. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next video, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye, world.